I apologize ahead of time. I had to post my computer up in the storage room. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? I want to sit here and talk to you today about sag aftra voice acting, and a recent revelation that happened. Something that's kind of important, if I'm being patently honest. Uh, as many of you guys know, back in, you know... Most of last year, we didn't really get too much new content because sag Astra, the Screen Actors Guild, the uh, Writers Guild, they were all basically all on strike and they were basically asking for protections for their jobs from, from artificial intelligence, you know, not being forced to put their writing, their their performances, their likenesses into a computer and then like having like basically... Uh, studios be able to like replicate themselves and like not have to pay them as much. Um, uh, they wanted you know better residuals from things like streaming. They wanted uh, worker more. They wanted uh, better better pay, better worker structure. They wanted to change the uh, the. They wanted to make you know writing a stable job again for people. You know they wanted people to be able to be on a project for six to eight months and then you know. And then line up a new project after that and just constantly keep like they wanted that protections and they won it and they won most of those things. And this was back in November the 8th of 2023. Why am I talking about this? Well, it's because um, sag after sucks now because they kind of fucked over uh, video game um, voice actors. Uh, why and why am I talking about this? It's because we, ladies and gentlemen, are now in the golden. We this we just 2023 was the golden age. You know, of, you know, it was like a golden, not golden age, but golden year of amazingly wonderful voice actor performances. We had Alan Wake, which all had, which every, which we, we had people were really great. And we had, you know, uh, you know, fucking everybody from Baldur's Gate 3. Like, hell, Neil Newbin won uh, uh, a game award for his performance of a be of Asterion. And that's not even to say, like, you know, the VAs of Shadowheart, Tarlac, Lazel, the narrator from Baldur's... Every, every VA, even the ones that weren't playable characters, like NPCs, were all just stellar, stellar, stellar performances. You know, and all in Aegis Elba in Cyberpunk 2077 was, was magnificent. Yuri Lowenthal was, you know, while he certainly didn't deserve to win over Neil Newbin, Yuri Lowenthal's performance in Spider-Man 2 as Peter Parker was stellar. You know, and so that's why it's kind of a slap in the face is face that we get, you know, here to, you know, on that's on November on January the 9th, SAG after decided, hey, we're going to work with Replica AI to uh, and, and, and we struck an agreement with Replica AI to allow voice actors to uh, be fairly compensated for their use for uses of voice models. Um meaning that apparently there is a now a fair compensation for uh voice actors getting their voice mod like their voice profiles moduled and used by replica ai um i want to show you guys the difference between um you know what actual effort of something someone like a neil newbin uh, in Baldur's Gate 3, which is which is a game, by the way, that lives and dies. Like, Baldur's Gate is the game of the year because, not because of the CRPG mechanics. The CRPG mechanics of it are fine. Like, I love the strategy. It's fun. It's cool. Whatever. D&D is great. But the reason why Baldur's Gate is so beloved and so amazing for people is because of, and the, it's so approachable, is because of the voice acting. This is it is a game where, where if you pay your voice actors and you do what the fuck you're supposed to with them, it shows in the form of, you know, paying dividends down the line. So let's let us let us look at a at let's look at, you know, an example of replica a replica studios. This is by replica studios, and in fact, you know, let's go to their clip. Let's go to their studio. Let's fuck off. Let's find something a little new. Let's uh, look at something that this was uh, came out a month ago. Always. So, so, bullshit music aside, this is what their uh, the 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 AI voices sound like. We stand on the brink of tomorrow, always ready for what's next. 
Okay. Rise beside me, brave warriors. For honor calls us to battle. Okay, tweak the performance, blah, blah, blah. Ready the arrows. Hold. Hold. Fire. It's alright. It's like mobile game quality like 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 you 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 very much were just hired an intern to do it type of voice acting versus what in the sweet hells were you thinking activating that lot i was right there god do you have any idea how much that hurt i thought the mind flare parasite protects you from the light well, apparently there's a limit. Somewhere between a nice summer's day and the full concentrated power of the sun! Next time, just warn me before you do something stupid. At least then I can get out of the blast radius. Now, shall we go? Or do you have any other chaos you need to unleash here? Let's go. Gladly. A night and day difference, right? Night and day difference. And, and so so what's going to happen is, is that studios are going to get good enough voice acting based off of these replicas, right? These voice acting replicas. And what's going to happen is, is that the prices of these replicas are going to go down, are going to cause people like a Neil Newbin or an Idris Elba or a Yuri Lewenthal and to have to lower their prices. Why would they have to lower their prices? Because the, because the whole purpose, one of the big things about art, right. Is like, you know, my videos, I'm, I'm, I dare my, actually I'm not, I dare my, I, I resident to call myself an artist in any capacity, but let's just use me for example. My, I have a cadence, I have a, a personality, and I have a on-screen persona that is my own. Are there people that are similar to me? Sure. Are there people that are the same as me? Not exactly. But, you know, there, if there are certain videos that, you know, my channel is unique in the way, in, because it is a reflection of me. A better example, I think, would be Say my girlfriend. My girlfriend is very is an artist herself. She is a very talented photographer. She, when she posts like photos that she makes are very very uniquely hers. You know, it's like the the she's able to look through the lens of a camera and you know take a shot that just feels uniquely hers. You pay for that, or let's take you know like even some of the voice actors here. Um, Neil Newbin has a pedigree as a voice actor. I want to be very clear, like he played Nemesis in um in in the RE3 make. He played high he voiced Heisenberg in Resident Evil Village. You know, like think about Heisenberg as a character, right? Like this this here 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 like listen to this. Well, well. Didn't think anyone was left. You must be pretty tough, huh? Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're not local. Even better. <laughs> Mother Miranda's gonna love you. <laughs> now compare it to this. We have a gallery of villains to look out for, but now we could be infiltrated by a shape changer. I can't even tell if any of you are acting strange because you've been replaced or because this group is full of weirdos. What that's what ha like that is what a voice actor is. Now, plenty of you might argue, hey, voice actors will still have a purpose. Po voice actors will still have like this, like this. And you know what? You might be right about that. But the problem is, is, is that this like deluge work, like, like the lower paid work that like voice actors will take before they like get more experience. They get more comfortable in their, in the give and take of and pull of their, of their work and they get more practice. 
they do shit like, you know, Fiverr work for mobile studios and things of that nature. This is how voice actors will really grow in the profession. It's also um, means that, like, you know, if someone like a Neil Newbin had a voice replica and a company says, we want Neil Newbin, and they says, yeah, I want to get paid this much. And I'm like, yeah, but, like, we kind of, but we looked at your voice replica from um, Replica Studios and saw and it's and it's and it's pretty in line with like what we need from your role but we'd love to have you personally would you be comfortable we would you be comfortable taking this much instead possibly just like that that's one of the issues especially if like you have multiple different replicas of different type of of different voice types um at the end of the day the voice the, the voice replicas aren't great they aren't good even unfortunately it's just <laughs> That this is 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 bad and justifiably so, you know. Um, what's it called? Uh, people are justifiably upset. This came out on the eleventh. This came out today, at time of recording, about literally thirty minutes ago. Prominent voice actors say they weren't told about a landmark deal setting how voices generated by artificial intelligence can be used in games. Many voice actors would like nothing AI to be used in games if they can, if, if, for, as, vo as far as voice, you know, actors are concerned. It's been struck by U.S. Actors Union SAG-AFTRA and AI firm Replica Studios. The union says it guarantees fully informed consent and fair compensation for its members, but many v voice artists who have long been concerned AI will replace them reacted with fury, calling one, one calling the deal garbage. In an email to members seen by the BBC, SAG-AFTRA said the deal was negotiated by a committee which included actors with significant and diverse experience performing in games. The contract was specifically tailored to the needs of voice actors, ensuring informed consent and proper compensation terms that are unique to this set of performers. It comes after SAG-AFTRA led a month-long strike in 2023 that we were talking about earlier to fight for protections from film and television studios using AI. Many voice actors have suggested this new deal is at odds with the purpose of that industrial action with Fallout and Mortal Kombat voice actor Sunil Malhorta saying he sacrificed to strike half of last year to keep my profession alive, not shop around my AI replica. In a blog covering the announcement, SAG after said the deal was approved by affected members of the union's voiceover performer community. Quote, recent developments in AI technology have underscored the importance of protecting the rights of voice talent, particularly as game studios explore more efficient ways to create their games, said the union's chief negotiator, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. With this agreement, we have achieved fully informed consent and fair compensation when it comes to the use of our members' voices and performances. But Steve Blum, a voice actor once credited by Guinness for being the most prolific in video games, says nobody he knew had approved of the deal. According to SAG, after the agreement lays out the terms and conditions for AI-generated voices in video games, which can be licensed by Replica Studios in both gaming and other forms of media, it requires the AI firm to get, firm to get consent from actors before it uses voices based on their likeness, and must and also gives voice actors the ability to deny their voice being used in perpetuity without their consent. So what you're saying is is, is that the default isn't voice at uh voice voice their voice being used in perpetuity without their consent so that is not by default it has been met with consternation from performers themselves with world of warcraft va andrew russell calling it garbage while shelby young who is who will provide the voice of yuko in the upcoming persona 3 reload said she was really disappointed in the union Voice actors outside of gaming also criticized the agreement, with Joshua Seth, known for jo voicing Ty in the animated series of Digimon, calling it a big mistake. While audiobook narrator Paige Reisenfeld said she was ashamed that her union payments went towards it. And Veronica Taylor, who provided the voice for Ash in Pokemon, you know, our fucking childhood, asked how the deal was made without being put to a vote. But sag after President Fran Drescher said the deal was a great example of AI being done right. Fuck you, Fran Drescher. All my homies hate Fran Drescher. Meanwhile, Replica Studios CEO Shara Navis said the deal was an ethical approach to AI. I'm sure she would say that. She said, we are excited by the new opportunities that this opens for the world-leading AAA studios who can now access the benefits of Replica AI voice technology while knowing that the talent is recognized and compensated fairly for their use of their likeness, he said. So, yeah. 
I want so in 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 and this is kind of one of brings me into the the next aspect of this video, which is uh a little bit of theory crafting. So this is the point where like y'all get down in the comments and get ready to like tell me I'm right or wrong. Um, I don't think SAG AFTRA respects um voice actors. Not only do I think they don't respect voice actors, I think they also don't respect um gaming voice actors in particular. You have to remember that Fran Drescher is old as shit. Fran Fine's still fine, don't get me wrong, but she's older than my mother. The fact of the matter is, is that um, video games, I think, are, 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 are among a certain people of an age demographic, especially when you are high up in a different industry that is competing with gaming as a gaming as an entertainment medium. I don't think people like Fran Drescher respect, and, and, and certainly people in, the, in TV and movies don't, don't respect gaming as an art form, even though ga the video game industry makes more money than TV, movies, and the music industries combined. Um, I think this is very much a way for them. I think I, I don't. They, I don't think they put this to a vote beca because they didn't. I don't think they respected voice actors enough to do it. I think we. They, I think they like like they look at the last twenty years of Disney prioritizing you know celebrity you know people to prioritizing celebrity voice actors in in movies as opposed to like actual tried and true voice actors because you have to remember that um whatever you might think about chris pratt i think he is an actor that definitely has some level of range and and, and i and that's commendable for that but when he is voice acting he's just being chris pratt meanwhile you have you know again i direct you back to you know, Asterian versus uh, versus uh, Heisenberg here, right? Like the differences between these two characters and in, in terms of their delivery and how they are are night and day. This man also was the was the body cast for Nemesis and in, in, in the VA for Nemesis back in RE3 and bum rushing motherfuckers and shit. So at the end of the day, um, we are looking at you know, an industry that has always sort of, we're looking at an industry, the gaming industry, which has always sort of been uh, uh, maligned by people of a certain generation. You know, we are getting to the point where like people in their 30s and 40s, they play games, this is normal, it's whatever, people grew up with this shit. You know, there's people who, you know, who were like, I don't know, um, 10, 10 or 15 years old and 2000 in the in the in the in the early mid 2000s, they were on MySpace, they were on early Twitter, they're on early YouTube, you know, you know, 15 like another 20 years have gone by since then these people are now in their 30s and like like are in their like like late late 30s early 40s and they they still play games they play games you have people who like like their only thing that they do with their wife like the thing that they do with their wives is they'll go home and they'll play world of warcraft together like that's that's a normal thing people do and you know at, at the at the end of the day um it's it, you know it's it's like with everything else in this country like the boomers and the gen like the gen xers are the ones that hold the levers of power in every industry and their biases reflect and that's what's happening here the people that run sag aftra are old as shit at least to me they're twi they're at least twice my age i'm 26 and you know like or like around twice my age at the very least and they don't res and they don't obviously don't respect the medium a medium that routinely out earns anything that they that they are in and so this is why i think that the this is why i think that they like sag after was the leaders of sag after were happy to have a make a closed door agreement with an ai studio something like ai by the way which should be treated like the devil because like everybody in the actors guild everybody in the screen or in the writers guild were deathly dead set against it and then they are more than happy to throw vas under the bus specifically gaming vas here because replica studios make stuff primarily for video games now they're branching out into other mediums and here's the ai loophole that like all of these um um all of these you know actors were concerned about they don't want like artificial intelligence they don't want to be used for these models um and unfortunately you know, all of the boomers that are in charge of SAG-AFTRA threw them under the bus. And that's 
deeply sad and deeply upsetting. And you have a bunch of industry veterans, like we saw in the BBC article, saying, like, we didn't get a say in this. We didn't get a vote on this. We Like, nobody knows, like, had input on this. I think very, very much you might have had, like, two or three people who are, like, do voice actor work in the upper echelons of SAG-AFTRA that just made the determination that it was okay. And then they took that at, as them speaking for everybody. This, um, I think, is a a piss in the face of all of of like of, of great of like great voice actors. Um, you know, I I think like I think especially after this year with all of the great performances that we have seen coming out of the games industry with 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 stellar amazing voice actors that are like paid enough and 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 and, and put it are invested enough in the project that we get you know beautifully wonderful performances like Cyberpunk. 2077 Phantom Liberty, like Alan Wake, like Baldur's Gate 3. I keep harping on it. Go play Baldur's Gate 3. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, this is just a slap in the face to not just the voice actors, but I think to everybody who had been supporting SAG-AFTRA because, you know, this this doesn't feel like solidarity. This feels like boomer judgment and them de deeming something as less important than another thing. At least that's my take on it. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments, and I'll box and if and I'll box with y'all down there too if you want. But um, yeah, that's the video. Again, I apologize for the current state of my background. Um, it's not going to get better anytime soon. I apologize, but um, I will catch you guys later. Have a lovely rest of your day, and um, solidarity forever, I guess. <laughs>